Welcome to another Autospec Renew video. Today we are here in Long Beach with the Revolt guys and their fantastic build, but not just one build. You have two things to show us today. So let's yes, start do. with what's under the hood of your truck. Oh, all right. Well, first likely. of all, this is the Hillbilly Deluxe. And, you know, maybe you heard Jerome saying it's been all over the Internet. So we've been racing. We've been driving. We've been towing. We've been doing everything with this truck. So what we have under the hood here is our Revolt crate motor. It's the CR43B. We call it a CR43 Bravo. Now, there are how many of these in the wild, Matty? What do we say? There's uh, 30 of them in the wild in all sorts. You got a G Wagon four wheel drive with a yep. transfer case behind it. There's a Miata, Mitch's Miata is going to be just out <laughs> oh, of control. Oh, that's going to be insane. Yeah. So the G Wagon we saw at SEMA. Yes. Yeah. So, and then we also have uh, a 67 Ford F100. Yep. That is also has a Revolt motor in it. It's an Apache. We have an Apache, a 59 Apache. In his uh, test video, he does a U turn and pulls the front wheel off the ground. That thing has so much torque. <laughs> anyway, but Long the way point of is, it goes in anything that's front engine, rear drive. It's got a Turbo 400 yoke on the back, um, and it will drop in in well a weekend, really. Yeah. The motor, the motor is as close as you're going to get to a drop-in crate motor. So if you'll notice here, um, well, let's do this, Maddie. You want to jump in there? <laughs> and, and, stop and we'll, pointing stuff out. <laughs> yeah, jump in there. <laughs> so while Maddie jumps in here, we're going to show you what it takes to mount a Revolt motor. So come on over here. All right. So what Maddie's going to point to first is our motor mounts. Now those motor mounts, that's typical of of American V8. Mm -hmm. And if you can mount an American V8 between the frame rails, you can put a Revolt CR43 Bravo in there. And Go if ahead. you uh, were getting something with a Rose Shop chassis, Rose Shop have our dimensions now. You can order a chassis with these mounts on it. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Right. Nice. so it drops right in. And then, you know, we'll show you the battery pack here in just a little bit, but that from the battery pack, you get 400 volts that comes right into where Maddie's pointing right now. Right there, that's your DC in. Yep. This is the inverter, turns it into AC. You got your three phases out to the back of the motor. And then behind that, there's a two to one gear reduction box. But we'll get a better view of that in a second. Yeah. Now, all of this is you can spend a lot of money building these. The Hillbilly Deluxe was purpose built on a working man's budget. Our joke around the shop I'm a disabled vet on a fixed income. That's a joke, but that is true. And we built this with that in mind. So we use stock radiator in the stock position, which is overkill for the coolant. And you know, you can see our <laughs> our custom made catch can. <laughs> There's a lot of you know the day before the race kind of fixes that never really been buttoned up on this thing. It's, it's rough and ready. Uh, we but, have a real pretty SEMA car. This ain't it. <laughs> this she's meant to do the hustle in an eighth. Now we found actually a sixteenth, and you know potentially a quarter mile. So let's go back here to the back of the truck while Maddie climbs out of there, and we'll show you the motor out and about. Here it is. In all its glory. So what we got here, Maddie? Well, like I said, this is what you were just looking at. This is the front. Yeah. This is your DC in. Your inverter. This has a bunch of cooling manifolds built in that distribute the coolant to the inverter and all the rest of it. And through the uh, the stator uh, out the back here, this is your gear reduction box. So it's a normal turbo 400 yoke. Oh, you you know, that. regular driveline. And this would be a park lock. This is an optional part if you wanted a park lock. Now, this torque box and the park paw, that's all supplied via torque trans. Mm. So we talked about the Miata, and the Miata is built by torque trans. That's Mitch's car, and he's the guy that makes okay. these uh, torque boxes. Yeah, so now, to one or a three to one, depending yeah. on your application, your rear end, how now, fast you want to go. All this is powered by a 22 by a solar panel. panel. <laughs> <laughs> it's all powered by this one solar panel. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So, but the solar panel, again, we were doing a budget build and this started off as a joke. And so I was like, well, we need to get a DC DC converter. How much is that? It was like, you know, I was like 1500 bucks. Man, I don't have that kind of money. He's like, well then throw a solar panel in there. That's stupid. Wait, will that work? And we tried it and it totally <laughs> charges the 12 volt. So that keeps my headlights going, that keeps my tail lights going, brake lights, signal lights, and any pumps or anything that needs to run off of 12 right. volts. But now back to this. This is the battery pack. This is the fastest battery pack in the whole world. How fast did this pack go, Maddie? 353 average over a measured mile. I think the peak was 359. That's a little bit of foreshadowing for uh, the yeah. next car we're going to look at. Hey. Okay, so 
What did this power at Bonneville? That powered the little giant, the Vesco car, number 444. There's a car that's been running since 1957. Uh, and this is it right here. Right. It's run with all kinds of different powertrains in it. Um, but the fastest it's ever been was under electric power in 2021? 2020? 21. So what are the specs on, on this one? Power-wise, uh, out of the battery pack is 2,500 amps continuous for the... Uh, <laughs> for the 3,000 amps, there you go. It's built for 3,000. Mm. All right. And uh, what would that be? A thousand foot-pounds of torque right at, before any gear reduction. Yes, yeah. this thing is, it gets up and goes. It'll pull from a stop up to 359 mile an hour in one gear. Yeah, so it has a .05 gearing in the back, but um, well, I'll let Eddie B tell you a little bit more about this. Well, this is the, uh, the world's fastest electric car. Um, it has a top speed of 354.8 miles an hour. Uh, we did that at Bonneville a couple of years ago. So this car actually belongs to Team Vesco. Uh, Team Vesco has been on the salt since 1933. So wow. they know a <laughs> thing or two about Lion Speed Racing. Uh, Maddie's a well, Lion season. Speed Racer now too. you got a couple records behind yeah, you. Yeah, we're going for another one next week. So we're trying to be the fastest electric bike at El Mirage, period. We want to be the fastest uh, electric bike at Bonneville, period, when we go as well. So. Should be an interesting year. We'll yeah. see how we go. Yeah, so this is already run. So uh, Team Vesco came to us a couple years ago, and this car was a bit, uh, it was built in 1957. So it's got so much race pedigree on it. Mm. Very, very well-known car out there. It's one of the most famous vehicles, especially from the most famous team. Uh, this is their other vehicle. They also have a primary vehicle now that they race. It does 503 miles an hour. It's called the <laughs> Turbinator 2. It's powered by a Chinook helicopter motor that's been highly modified at 5,500 RPM, or 5,500 horsepower. So uh, it's an all-wheel drive system, um, and it is the fastest wheel-driven car in the world. So all right. they now have both, both the electric and the gas records. Records, okay. So what does it take to convert an existing record car? Oh, years, wasn't it? Five months? Oh, no, wait, yeah, it was five months, yeah. <laughs> it was a pain in the butt. Yeah. Uh, so this car came to us as gas. Yeah. Um, had a small block Chevy in it as its last power plant. It started with a Model B motor in 1957, so it's wow. had a lot of different power plants inside of it. Um, when we got it, we, we uh, had the engine removed, and we had to actually cut this car in half, basically, to widen it up. Our really good friend over at AVS Fabrication, Albert Shave, he's an amazing fabricator. He was able to come in and kind of go through the whole car and go, okay, we need to extend this, we need to redo this, we need to put a torsion brace over the top of the car to keep it safe. Because all of a sudden, we had about six feet to put everything into. That's including batteries. So what's everything? So we have a 22 kilowatt battery pack in this car that is capable of sustaining 400 volts at 3,000 amps. Wow. We, yeah. And a very little voltage sack. Mm, okay. Um, it's comprised of what, 1,152 Honda Insights? Yeah. <laughs> it's a few cars worth, hey. Yeah. 12P. 12 in parallel running, you know, a continuous, it, it, it's made to handle 3,000 amps mm. without without even batting an eye. He uses the same batteries in your motorcycle. We do, yeah, they're really, really good cells. We kind of got them before everyone realized how good they were. So the first batch, we got them for pennies on the dollar. We went to go buy more and they were 10 times the price. Like, oh, typical. <laughs> Luckily, we had enough of them for this car and his bike. We so pieced it together. We pieced yeah. it together. Yeah. Um, we first ran this car with a Tesla P100D pack okay. and it failed miserably. Uh, we couldn't get over 300 miles an hour. Mm, okay. And just too much voltage sag, too much current, and uh, yeah, we would have driven from here to New York. Yeah, we could have yeah. taken it across <laughs> the country. Yeah. Yeah, it just didn't have the sea rating. Not the to... most practical one. Yeah. No, but you know, at that point, we really didn't have much out there, and I was, you know, people were trying to tell me to do this, do that, and then I was testing these cells because I just bought a pallet of them for fun, and I got a really good sea rating out of it. So when we came back from Bonneville, the first time. All I did is change the batteries. Okay. We went back to Bonneville and ran over 350 miles an hour just with the battery train. So, with that, you know, it's very important when you guys build these vehicles, motors, all that's your battery is your most important component. That's where it's the heart of this entire system. And if those things aren't working properly, your car's not going to work because that's all we change is just batteries and look at what we did, we were able to do. Which that's is kind of very interesting because with a V8 powered one, you would change the whole motor every time you would go on a yeah. race on yeah. a attempt to break a record. Uh, what else did you have to modify? Did you change the length of the no. car? You managed to just the package width. it all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, we, the width was the problem. Um, we didn't have much length, but we couldn't stretch the car, but we could go this way. To, so we had to go wider underneath the shell, but yeah. we had to keep everything this original fiberglass. Um, so we used two Tesla Model S motors. 
Like this, what you saw yes. right here? Yep. There's two of those. There's two of those back back With yeah. a six inch supercharger belt like this between them. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then yeah. the bottom one, I guess you call it the primary motor, I guess, has a drive shaft straight up. Drive shaft, what, this long? No, it's only four inches from, <laughs> from knuckle four to knuckle. Four inch drive shaft <laughs> to drive. a quick change rear end, yeah. When, when I went to uh, our driveline guys, I'm like, I need a driveline. They're like, okay, what's the dimensions? I'm like, four inches. They're like, yeah, like four feet? Four no, feet? No, no. no, four <laughs> inches. They're like, what is this going in? <laughs> I'm all, don't worry about it. It's uh, it's gonna be fun. But uh, so we use that. We have plenty of power on tap. We actually haven't opened this car up yet. Okay. We only used a, a, a fraction of what it's capable of doing because my dad raced bikes his whole life. He goes, look, don't break the equipment, break the record. So we tuned it in a way that mathematically were, was gonna give him the record, was gonna get us to top speed. This year we come up there and we're going to tweak some stuff and have some more fun and see how much further we could push this vehicle. Because really, we did a little bit of showing off too at the start line because all these streamliners, pretty much all of them will get a push truck. Yeah. To, and it's a circus. They start them on alcohol, they switch them over to nitro and it's this whole ordeal. And then this just takes off. Just takes I want to do with the camera. He's setting his camera up and he looks up and this car is already 20 feet away. <laughs> and it left a set of 11s behind it. And so Jill was like, if we I, push off, yeah. we can, there's, there's a couple more mile hour right there just in, in the push off. Well, yeah. And we, we redesigned the cooling systems yeah. too, because we do still develop heat. You know, okay. the motors do generate quite a bit of heat and we have to get that out of the, with no radiators. So this is pretty much closed system. We run a lot of dry ice through it. Um, okay. Yeah. So this year is a little bit different. We're, we're trying some other cooling systems. Um, What's the, the typical reaction uh, for the other guys bringing their own V8 powered ones, and then you just show up with your electric just one? Wild <laughs> curiosity from from the races, especially yeah. when we're out at PRI. It was a big eye opener. That's a big you know race kind of show. All these people like they see something that goes fast, and all they want to do is learn about it. Yeah. You know, how do I? Go there, faster. There's yeah. a lot of naysayers, though. There's yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. people that, oh, I hate your electric crap. This is garbage. It's not fast. Um, so they we did have people going fast. We, we, we had an incident when, when we couldn't get over 300 miles an hour. There was a gentleman at Bonneville that kind of laughed at us like, oh, you're never going to make it to the 300 mile an hour lane because have they have a special lane for anyone that goes over 300 okay. because those are big numbers. And we couldn't get into it that weekend. And he kind of gave us a little of a hard time for it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to prove this guy wrong. And then we came back a month later and we're just running this thing, this thing that eight passes without having any tune ups, <laughs> any motor replacements. Um, I remember when Rick Vesco, we did our first shakedown run. We ran 289 miles an hour. We made the whole course and he turned back at me and he said, kid, we gave you a one out of 10 chance to even make it to the end of the salt. And we did it eight times. It's kind of burying the lead a little and that we this thing was built on this thing never left the trailer at our shop. It was built on the trailer. The, trailer. the first time these tires touched the ground was on the salt. The we had no way to test it. It yeah, moved yeah, under its own power yeah. was yeah. from the start line. Well, how do you test a car like this? You can't turn it. Yeah. I mean I cannot make a U turn in here. <laughs> so we pulled it up with uh with with a forklift. I know I know our motors work, but we've never run two of them belted together. So literally we're on the starting point, my brother or starting line, and my brother looks at me and goes, You better hope this works. <laughs> and the thing takes off and he goes, You lucky SOB. <laughs> he goes, You just got away with murder. Because we never tested that car and it ran two hundred and eighty some miles an hour. So we have not mentioned it yet, but you have a brand new livery on it. Yeah, by Hot Dog Customs up in uh Temecula. Temecula. Yeah, Hot Dog's yeah. been painting he's my cars. He's a real for, artist. Yeah, he's been painting my cars for a couple of years now. He's an amazing artist, like you just said. Mm. Um, this this whole EV industry has brought a lot of friendships together. We just had Chris Hazel over here from Felton. Um, we love playing with everybody. It's like a giant sandbox, and the people we meet, like yourself, Jerome, and, uh, and everybody else, it, it's a family. It brings us together. Uh, it, it gets you know people like Chris and me talking right now about battery development, what's next. And we put our brains together and I realize that we, if we all work together as a team, even though we may be competitors, yeah. we can get so much further with this whole thing. And you know that's the attitude that some of us have taken and you know here are the results and it of works. that. And recently you've announced you'll be working with Legacy EV. Yep, Legacy has been uh, working with us for a couple of years now actually. Yeah, yeah. so uh, actually Snow is one of their trainers. All right. So he does conduct some of the. As trees. you say, it's a community and yeah. an industry, and everybody a, works together hand in hand. It's a small world, yeah. but it's, it takes you to pretty amazing places. Yeah, you can't just cross your arms and go. You know what? I'm just going to do this on my own. You got to be able to have an open mind, and you know, Chris has cooler stuff than I do. I might have something he wants. 
you might have something. It's like, well, let's put it all in a pot and see well, what this happens. This is kind of the first big show that we've been to this year, and it's like seeing, oh, yeah, we were all hanging out at SEMA. It's like seeing early friends again. <laughs> yeah. I, actually, that's why I come out here is to hang out with the people in the industry and, yeah, of course, yeah. talk to people that are interested in this. But everyone here, including Maddie, we met because we like to have fun. We enjoy this. We share the same passions and common interests. And, you know, it's such a new industry, too, with so much more ahead of it. We're, I think we're just barely scratching the surface okay. of what's going to happen here in the next 10, Imagine 20, where the years. industry will be in two years ago when you compare it to where it was two or three years yeah. ago. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> and people like Gary Hooker from Hooker Headers is a good friend of ours, yeah. and he's a very well-known guy. He comes by our shop all the time, and I said, hey, Gary, you're, you're an original hot rodder. What do you think of this? He goes, you're doing the same thing we did back in the 50s but you're doing it with something different and it's amazing good for you guys we call it hot rodding 2.0 yeah, exactly so where will you be able to see this next so hopefully um we're working with a couple potential sponsors this year and if we get all our uh, our ducks in a row we'll probably be running this back at bonneville again in 2023 all right perfect guys if you like to see more record breaking bills like this one let us know in the comments below Give us a thumbs up and let us know if you want to see even more coverage from all the shows this summer and later this year. Guys, we'll see you in the next one.